أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد بيض بركة سيدي شايد سيدي محمد فوزي الكالكري قدس الله وسره Notes from Mudaykara of November 11th, 2023. Before starting this video, I would like to state that this work would never have seen the light without Sidi Shaykh. If something is wrong, it will be from myself, and everything that is correct is from Sidi Shaykh. During Sidi Shaykh's tour of Europe, a visitor who attended one of Sidi Shaykh's Qadda lectures claimed to have multiple dream visions of Shaykh Sidi Abdul Qadr al Jilani. Rahimahullah. He mentioned that in these visions, Sidi Abdul Qadr al Jilani showed him the name of Al Jalal Allah from various perspectives. Furthermore, he reported seeing Sidi Abdul Qadr al Jilani guided him to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam and more. The questioner added that he had also prayed multiple prayers of seeking counsel, istikhara, and visited many Sufi orders, yet he hadn't found what he was seeking. For those who see awliya of Allah in their dreams, Sidi Shaykh gave the story of Sayyidina Musa السلام, from the Qur'an. He said that when Allah gave Sayyidina Musa permission for spiritual seclusion, khulwa, in the Mount of Tur, he left his people and secluded himself on the Mount for 40 nights. When he came out of his spiritual seclusion, he came out with its fruit. And what a precious fruit! The tablets, al alwah this is for Sayyidina Musa السلام, who is a messenger, a prophet, and from the highest of the righteous. He has a particular function, which is to convey the message, a risala. He has a book, which is the Torah, and the tablets, which are sciences of monotheism, ulum al-tawheed, and contain the reading of the supreme name of Allah with its ten readings. Moreover, among all the stories of other prophets in the Quran, the stories of Musa السلام, are the largest. If one searches within the Qur'an and the story of the Prophets, Qasas al-Anbiya, one won't find a story larger than that of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. His story serves as an explanation and clarification and represents one of the miracles that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can count. Sidi Shaykh added that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam was known as the one who speaks to Allah, Kalimullah. He spoke directly with Allah while awake not through dreams. What did he ask from Allah? He said, My Lord, show yourself to me that I may look at you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not belittle him. Instead, he said to him, You will not be able. However, he granted him something unique, not given to anyone else before him. He said, You will not be able, but look at the mountain. This mountain held immense sanctity for Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. Whenever he wanted to talk to his Lord, he went to this mountain. He took off his sandals and talked to his Lord, and Allah responded. From this came the verse, Take off your shoes, you are in the holy valley of Tuwa. The valley of Tuwa lay at the base of the mountain, while Sayyidina Musa's Khulwa was at the top of the mountain. The whole mountain held a special significance in Sayyidina Musa's heart. At this point of his response, Sidi Sheikh explained to the questioner that he must return to the Qur'an to find the answer to his question. He should not expect the Sheikh to tell him that Sidi Abdul Qadr al Jilani is from the righteous, then do whatever he told him in dreams. This is not how it works. Sidi Sheikh added that Sayyidina Musa السلام, is a special case. He is the one who talks to Allah, he came with the Torah and the tablets. When he gathers his people and they ask, Is there anyone more knowledgeable than you? He said, I don't see that you have a scholar more knowledgeable than me. Anyone in his status would have answered the same way. Nevertheless, Allah instructed Sayyidina Musa to seek the righteous servant, Al-Abdul Salah. Was this righteous servant alive or had he returned to his Lord? He was indeed alive. If God has intended to guide Sayyidina Musa to someone who had already returned to his Lord, he would have led him to Sayyidina Ibrahim salam. It would make perfect sense since Sayyidina Ibrahim's position is in the seventh heaven, while Sayyidina Musa's position is in the sixth heaven. 
chronologically, Sayyidina Ibrahim came before Sayyidina Musa. Moreover, in terms of presence, Sayyidina Ibrahim held the esteemed title of Khalilullah, the friend of God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to grant Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam an ascension, Ma'raj, similar to what he did with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and elevate him to the presence of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. However, Allah directed him to seek the righteous servant, to whom he best owed mercy and taught knowledge. If it were only mercy without knowledge, it would not have been the same since Sayyidina Musa already has Allah's mercy upon him. It's evident in his privilege to talk with Allah and the revelation of the Torah and the tablets. However, Sayyidina Musa السلام, specifically needed knowledge. Sidi Shaykh added that when Sayyidina Musa went to the righteous servant, he said to him, May I follow you so that you teach me something of that knowledge which you have been taught by Allah? From this, one can understand that companionship, sohbah, is both physical and spiritual. Therefore, if one wants to learn divine knowledge, hidden knowledge, the knowledge of mercy, then the living righteous servant is indeed indispensable. Sidi Shaykh added that the brother was asking about his dreams of Sidi Abdul Qadr al jilani These dreams may be considered similar to how the Torah or the tablets were revealed to Musa a.s. Even if Sidi Abdul Qadr al jilani showed him the name of al Jalal Allah or La ilaha illallah, it's still impossible to find an explanation or to understand it because knowledge requires following a living man. Sidi Shaykh emphasized again the elevated status of Sayyidina Musa a.s. who detached himself from the Torah and the tablets and asked the living righteous servant if he a.s. could follow the righteous servant to teach him some of the knowledge that Allah had taught him. Not all of it, but a portion of it because he knows that the knowledge of the righteous servant is righteousness, rushed. Sidi Shaykh then added that the question now is where will one find Sidi Abdul Qadr al-Jilani? He mentioned that the questioner had said that he visited multiple Sufi orders and prayed istikhara to Allah and he sees in his dreams Sidi Abdul Qadr al-Jilani. If one is sincerely seeking Allah and approaching him, God will not leave him astray. If one truly seeks knowledge of Allah rather than seeking a person, Allah will not abandon him. Sidi Shaykh explained that consistently seeing at Sidi Abdul Qadr al-Jilani in dreams signifies having a connection with the person rather than seeking knowledge of Allah. If one truly wants Allah's knowledge, he should implore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide him, like he did with Musa alayhi salam, to the righteous servant among 8 billion of human beings. If someone claims that he did that but saw Sidi Abdul Qadr Jilani, then he did it for Sidi Abdul Qadr, not for Allah. Sidi Abdul Qadr al Jilani is indeed a righteous servant and perfect Sufi master, Shaykh Kamil. So Allah showed the seeker his reality. It's as if the istikhara was to ask Allah about Shaykh Abdul Qadr al Jilani. However, if one was truly asking Allah to save him from his distance and separation from Allah and to find a solution to him, Allah would certainly guide him to one of his servants. The questioner interjected and said that he was planning to visit Sidi Shaykh in Morocco. Sidi Shaykh Qadda emphasized that his explanation was not intended to make the questioner come to him. Instead, Sidi Shaykh said that he wants him to go back to Allah. Sidi Shaykh added that he doesn't want someone to come and shake his hand while his heart is attached to someone else. Rather, he wants those whom Allah has guided to him, Qadda Sidi Shaykh added that he always recommends istikhara for newcomers. This advice is even written on the internet and Facebook pages of the tariqa. Pray istikhara for seven days. Furthermore, one should not pray istikhara for the Shaykh, but for Allah and oneself, seeking Allah's guidance to guide him to his Shaykh. Sidi Shaykh added that if someone prays istikhara specifically for the Shaykh himself, Sidi Shaykh here is referred to himself, Allah we certainly reveal to that person that Shaykh Muhammad Fawzi al-Kalkari Qadda sallallahu sallam is a wali. Sidi Shaykh said that he openly and publicly declares himself a wali. However, there is a possibility that the person praying istikhara should seek knowledge elsewhere. That is why istikhara for Allah is important. Later in the Mudakara, Sidi Shaykh added that the first thing he uttered when he left his spiritual seclusion 
was I come back to Allah. So he guided me to my shaykh. So here I am, my shaykh, my shaykh. Sidi Shaykh explained that when he sought the repentance, he did not go to his shaykh first. Rather, he returned to Allah, and it was Allah who guided him to his shaykh. Upon Allah's guidance to his shaykh, Sidi Shaykh Qadda started speaking with the tongue of his shaykh, seeing with the sight of his shaykh, and walking with the foot of his shaykh. Sidi Shaykh expressed that all goodness comes from his shaykh. Then he told the questioner that he should return to Allah, not to Sidi Shaykh Qadda Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. If he returns to Sidi Shaykh before Allah, the path will be difficult for him. That's why Sayyidina Musa Alayhi Salam returned to Allah and Allah guided him to the righteous servant. And if one asks how he should return to Allah, it's through the sunnah of his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Sidi Shaykh referred to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam where he says, He whose migration Hijra was to Allah and his messenger, his migration is to Allah and his messenger. Sidi Shaykh explained that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam mentioned Allah before the messenger in the hadith. If the messenger were intended first, he would have been mentioned first, but that wasn't the case. Therefore, one who seeks only Allah, who is unsatisfied with anything other than Allah, should set his intention for Allah in meaning or spiritually, al-ma'na, and toward his messenger in the physical world, fil Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is omnipresent with the servant, but one requires a gate represented by the messenger to realize this presence of Allah. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, For whomsoever I'm a master, Ali is his master. Man kuntu mawla, fa'aliyun mawla. In the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, there were many companions. The Prophet said about them all, My companions are like stars. Whichever you follow, you will be rightly guided. Sidi Shaykh explained that the companions were like stars in terms of number, and black stars in terms of illumination and so on. But when it comes to return to Allah, the Prophet ﷺ said, For whomsoever I'm a master, Ali is his master. He did not mention ﷺ, the promised with paradise and mubashirina bil jannah, or the companions as the masters. Instead, he chose the unique among all of the companions. Although every companion has his value and importance to God, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. So why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam chose Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajah? It's because sainthood, wilaya, requires singularity and does not require multiplicity. It's similar to prayer, which cannot have two Imams. Even if there are two Imams in the same prayer, one of them should be the Imam, and the other one should be a follower, Ma'amun. This occurs in mosques when two Imams meet in the same prayer. Each of them politely invites the other to lead the prayer. Sidi Shaykh then addressed the question, saying that in terms of dream vision, his Imam is Shaykh Abdul Qadr Jilani. However, he would not be able to find him, even if he searches all the earth. This is because the time of Sidi Abdul Qadr al Jilani rahimahullah, has passed, and he has returned to his Lord. Sidi Shaykh added that even he, Qadda Sura, were to identify the living righteous servant, one might insist on his relationship with Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani rahimahullah, continuing to pursue both of Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani and the living righteous servant. This will result in having two Imams, which is not feasible. Thus, one should empty his cup before filling it again, and the way to this is to return to Allah. This is the most appropriate solution. Sidi Shaykh advised the questioner to implore Allah, saying, O oh Lord, you are my Lord and I'm your servant. I understood your message that your gate is Shaykh Abdul Qadr al-Jilani, so how do I find him? Sidi Shaykh explained that maybe there are other persons carrying the name Abdul Qadr al-Jilani, and one of them is alive. So when one claims that he saw Sidi Abdul Qadr al-Jilani in dreams, without living in his time and without seeing his image, maybe that's just one's interpretation. Maybe Allah guides him to a master called Abdul Qadr al-Jilani in his city or in his village without knowing him. This is similar to what Sayyidina Musa did. He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where to find the righteous servant, and Allah instructed him to go to the junction of the two seas near the rock. 
reminded him not to forget the fish. However, he forgot. Therefore, when one seeks guidance through istikhara from Allah and receives a sign, he should act upon it without hesitation or delay. So that was all for this video. Alhamdulillah, الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا إن هدانا الله. لقد جاءت رسول ربنا بالحق. اللهم لك الحمد. اللهم لك الحمد. اللهم لك الحمد. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين